place. Okay, let's wait for a few people to join us. It's six o'clock, right? So, firstly, I would like thanks to everyone those who are joining us today. Welcome to the uh, Zubis another session on another emerging technologies with another uh, uh, amazing speaker from the uh, different corner of the world, right? So, thank you for joining us today. We are going to have a very insightful session on the Web three, right? So, hope you all are excited as well. So firstly, I would like to uh, welcome you all. Those who joined, even our guest speaker, I would like to welcome him. Uh, that uh, thank you for joining us, and uh, yeah. So let me introduce you with time, and we are going forward, right? So uh, we are back. Uh, we are back again to take you on a journey with emerging technologies, guys. And this time, we will be deep dive into the web three development on Skynet. And this workshop is perfect for anyone interested in the blockchain and Web3, right? Or anyone looking to learn something new. So in this particular thing, no prior uh, Web3 or blockchain experience is needed. Matthew, Matthew is going to cover up each and everything. So uh, from the side of Zubi2, I would like to welcome Mr. Matthew Sevi from the uh, uh, CIA. So Matthew is an engineering manager and software developer at CIA, and he's, a, he's having a very vast uh, uh, experience of working with several other Companies including uh, PNG and other as well, right? So there are several other companies also with whom Matthew previously worked, right? So uh, now I would like to uh, hand over this particular session to Matthew. So Matthew, it's now your audience, your stage. Take it forward. Thank you for joining us today. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for that introduction. Um, hi everyone. My name is Matthew CV. Uh, as they said, I'm an uh, engineering manager and software engineer at uh, SIA, um, one of the kind of core uh, technologies that we're going to be talking to about today. Um, and yeah, so today we're going to talk about uh, Skynet and you know, Web3 development and how to kind of go from you know, zero, to, zero to Skynet developer. Uh, and we're actually going to go through kind of a live example at the end of this, so, uh, which I'm really excited for. So you can kind of see just how, just how easy it is to kind of uh, get into this type of development. Um, so, uh, we're going to cover kind of really high level, um, some key parts about, you know, blockchain, SIA, the, you know, company that I work for, what Skynet is, why it's so special, how it works and, and how to get started. Uh, so blockchain, what is it? So really blockchain has come to encompass all of these technologies that go around making something like Bitcoin and SIA work. And so, you know, when someone says blockchain, they're really talking about, you know, the, the data store itself of the, of the blockchain. They're also talking about the consensus algorithm, the P2P network, the proof of work algorithm. So all, all of that. And so we're not going to dive into any, you know, really technical um, understanding of that in today's talk that kind of goes outside the scope. Um, but what I do want to talk about is what blockchain and what these uh, networks have enabled. And it's really about removing the requirement of trust. Uh, it removes the needed for trusted third parties and central authorities. Um, and it really, and the main thing is that it really gives back control to users and individuals. So SIA is a decentralized data storage platform. Um, another way to think about it is that it's an open marketplace for data storage. So it allows for um, the inner you know, exchange of data storage between two parties. Um, and on that same kind of topic that we just talked about, what does blockchain enable? You know, what SIA really enables is that it enables complete control over your data. So if we kind of dive into that a little bit, so how SIA works is that we have hosts on the network and those hosts join the network and provide their excess data storage capacity. So they, you know, the collective hosts on the network give that overall network capacity for uh, our decentralized cloud. And renters can then join the network and use that capacity just like they would use any other cloud storage uh, provider. All data on the network is encrypted and erasure coded client side, so on the renter's machine. Um, so only the renter can access their data on the SIA network. Um, and that kind of is the key component, uh, component there in terms of how the renter and the users have total control over their data. So uh, on SIA, only the renter that uploads their data has access to that data and can really, um, and no hosts or anyone else can take control of their data away from them, which is, which is super important and uh, really great. So then what is Skynet? So really Skynet is a CDN layer on top of SIA. 
Um, Skynet is a Web3 platform, so it supports files, applications, identities, and communities. Um, it's fully decentralized, so you can run a Skynet portal, and we'll talk more about what portals are in a minute. Um, but you can run a full Skynet portal on a regular laptop. So, you know, having an SSD and eight gigs of RAM is really all you need to run a Skynet portal. So the laptop that I'm using to give this talk today is could be a perfect uh, machine for running a Skynet portal. Um, and so probably everyone else in the audience, if they're on some sort of personal computer, uh, they can probably run a portal on, on their laptops and their machines. Um, so really low barrier to entry from a hardware standpoint really helps to make, make Skynet truly a decentralized ecosystem. Uh, Skynet is global and universal, and we'll kind of go more in depth in that in a minute in terms of what that specifically means. Um, and Skynet is very high performance. So what makes Skynet so special? Um, Skynet is, Skynet data is censorship resistant. So when data is uploaded to the Skynet network, there's no one that can say no and take that away from you. So there is a concept of pinning data on the Skynet uh, network. And so as long as one person and one portal and one node is is pinning that data and accessing that data, um, that data stays live forever. Uh, there's no servers, so no cost of devs from that standpoint. There's no apps being discontinued. Um, it's Skynet data is globally available everywhere um, and accessible by all applications. So when someone uploads a file to one portal, all other portals see it immediately and all apps on Skynet can immediately access that content. Skynet enjoys uh, account level decentralization. So really, uh, you know, the users, um, that decentralization is all the way down to the account level. And kind of as we talked about before, about being able to run a portal on, on your laptop, there's no special software or hardware needed to, to access the network. So talking a little bit more about how Skynet works. Um, so we talked a little bit, kind of referenced this concept of web portals. So uh, a web portal allows users to upload and download files. Um, when a user uploads a file uh, to Skynet, we call that a Sky file. Uh, when an upload happens, uh, what the user gets in return is a Skylink. And that Skylink is a unique identifier that points to that Sky file on the Skynet network. Skylinks are, can be resolved through any portal, and we'll kind of go through an example of that in a, in a, in a minute. And they're immutable. So that means if I uploaded um, a picture of my dog to Skynet, um, I would get a Skylink back. And I could then immediately resolve that Skylink through any other portal, not just the portal that I uploaded it through. And additionally, if I uploaded that same picture to a different portal, I would get the same Skylink back. Um, uh, so that's really important in terms of being able to ensure that you have the right right content on, on the network. So we talked about how Skynet is supports applications. So it's decentralized app hosting. So uh, Skynet runs in the browser. Uh, so any client side web applications can also run on Skynet and they can be they can live and run completely in Skynet. Uh, Skynet offers an API that allows web apps to then upload and download download that data. So those applications that are hosted and living in Skynet uh, can access the data in Skynet, upload new data to Skynet, and uh, they can be accessed through any portal uh, by anyone anywhere. Uh, and we, what we call those applications that are hosted exclusively on Skynet is we call them SCAPs. So it's kind of our uh, little acronym that we use for those. So talking a little bit more about how portals work. Um, so portals are how users access Skynet. Um, portals can view all content on the Skynet network. Um, we, talked to, we kind of mentioned this already, but when you upload a file through one portal, it's instantly available on other all other portals. So there's not a, a propagation kind of delay that you have to wait for. And anyone can run a portal, kind of you know talked about this a couple of times. The hardware requirements are super reasonable. Um, the entire stack is open source, so you can kind of see exactly what's happening. Um, and everything is dockerized and containerized for easy, kind of like one-click setup, one-click upgrade, and, and uh, making it as easy as possible and reducing those barriers to entry to really help with that whole um, idea of decentralization. So kind of getting into some of these examples. So uh, 
here are some examples of some sky links of content that has been uploaded um so for file sharing so we have this first part of the url this https through net that's our actual website so if we go to this is our main skynet network so this this is a web portal that we are hosting to give people free access to Skynet. Um, and so what we can do is if we click on this link, it is going to resolve a picture of Saya and the Saya logo. So uh, you can see we have the Skylink right here um, at the end of that. Whoops. So we have the Skylink here, this capital I through Q, that's the Skylink. So uh, what we can do, as I mentioned, that data is all available through any portal, we can change this to a different portal. And it's the same exact content, same uh, same Skylink, and it resolves and it's instantly available. Um, so that's kind of how that basic file sharing uh, would work. Uh, we also have a basic example of a Skynet application. Um, so this is an example of a paste bin. Um, so we have... Uh, I make my screen a little bigger. So we have uh, this example of a decentralized paste bin. So the Skynet link is to the application itself. So if you go again to a different uh, Skynet portal, it is still there. It's the exact same application. So these applications are available anywhere to anyone. Uh, and so then we can kind of do our little test in here, we can say Skynet is awesome. And then we can generate a Skylink to our uh, pastes that we just did. And we will go to that link. And there is our text that we just uploaded to that paste bin. And this is something that we just created. And so if we go back to a different web portal with that same Skylink, it's the same content, it's still there. So it's kind of showing the, you know, that little more of that power of, of how Skynet allows for applications in the browser and you know that content is immediately added to the network and instantly available and uh, and yeah all all in the browser so if we talk about a little bit more of an exam advanced Skynet application we have uh, you can see that this looks slightly different in terms of that link so we actually hosted a hackathon um, that ended a, a couple weeks ago um, with namebase and handshake and uh, what we did is we integrated uh, that Handshake domain resolution with our Skynet portal. So it allowed for Handshake domains to uh, link to Skynet links. So you can kind of tell that the Skylinks are not super human readable. Um, so not really user friendly in terms of uh, remembering what those Skylinks are, um, but we can use it and you can reference it to a much more friendly uh, domain. So. So if we go to uh, this, so this is an example of a much more powerful Skynet application. Um, and so this is a fully decentralized blogging platform. So this uh, Wikio blogging platform allows you to create your own blog, write your blogs, edit your blogs, and everything lives on Skynet and it is completely decentralized. And and that's that was pretty cool. And this this was actually the winner of our, of our hackathon. We, um, you know, really liked this implementation and kind of really highlighted the power of Skynet and how you can have uh, really quite powerful applications hosted purely on Skynet. So they're fully decentralized, completely censorship resistant, and it allows you to then create content in a decentralized manner that's also censorship resistant. Um, and yeah, we were super excited about that. Um, and so now the, um, you know, with that name-based integration, we can uh, have much more uh, human readable uh, names to remember by. Uh, so <clears throat> we have some documentation to help people get started. So we have some nice uh, documentation for our SDKs. Um, we have a number of different languages available. Um, got examples for the different languages. Um, so you can you know, basically just copy and paste and, and get to the races, which is great. Um, we have uh, some video tutorials of uh, how to get going. Um, you know, when we were working on Skynet, we really wanted to focus on developers and really making it developer friendly. And so we put a lot of effort into our 
SDKs and making them nice and uh, easy. And so we have uh, currently Browser.js, Python, Go, and Node.js. Um, and so uh, a number of different languages to make it uh, easy to get going. Um, and we've kind of seen this already, but uh, this is the website to the main Skynet portals that we use and we host and supply. <clears throat> um, so all content uploaded and applications hosted through sizeguy.net. Uh, you know, we we support that and you know, we're currently offering that free access. Um, and we're super excited to see how people are using Skynet. Um, <clears throat> so we have, yeah, so here, here are some links to some of our uh, SIA, uh, Twitter and uh, Reddit and um, some of our uh, core stuff. Uh, we have our main Skynet web portal documentation on GitHub. Uh, so here's all the information around uh, setting up a web portal. We have a full set of setup scripts for people if they are interested in doing that. Um, and this is also where all of our SDKs are um, and really everything that you need to know to kind of get started and uh, get going. <clears throat> so that's kind of the overview that I wanted to kind of give to people and get people grounded and, and uh, in a place to know kind of where we're going now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go through uh, a little workshop that we put together. So, so we also host this on GitHub. So this is <clears throat> available to anyone to uh, kind of reference in the future, share with others, and, and anyone can go through this. So uh, we have this Skynet workshop. So right now we just have the uh, intro workshop that we're going to be going through. Um, and we built this to try and allow for people to fork this repo and kind of do an uh, interactive kind of working through it uh, to kind of continue on um, as we add different content, people can kind of come back and kind of expand their applications uh, and kind of go through those examples of how to different use the different uh, functionality. And so <clears throat> this is the uh, intro workshop that we're going to be going through today. So we're going to go through kind of a, a real world example right now. So I'm going to switch over to my terminal screen. <clears throat> All right, so we've created a directory here. I'm just going to go back and I'm going to share both screens. All right, so we have both screens going. So we have, we're going to kind of walk through this example and kind of in. Uh, and doing it, doing it live. So we have prerequisites, fork the main repo or uh, install we get. So I had previously uh, forked this repo and I have it on my own uh, GitHub profile. So I'm going to go there and going to clone it. We have our Skynet workshop now. We have our uh, main uh, readme. We're going to go into the intro workshop that we're going to go through right now. So we're now in our, our readme document. So uh, the only thing that you need to have installed to do this uh, intro is either um, forking the wor uh, workshop repo that I said, or have we get installed uh, and then node. So um, I've got node installed, so we're all set. Um, so first, we're going init to initialize our application. And so we're using Webpack for a lot of this. So a lot of kind of these steps are coming right from the web Webpack uh, getting started. Um, so you can always use this as a kind of additional um, helpful information to kind of build out your applications using this uh, web. Uh, using this Webpack uh, toolkit. So uh, first step, say npm init dash, dash y. Uh, so the dash y just passes yes to all of the, uh, so for those that aren't familiar with Node, 
Um, when you do npm init, it creates a node application. It's going to ask you a bunch of kind of like uh, informational stuff about your application um, in terms of like a name, an author, a license, all that stuff. The dash y just allows you to kind of yes to all of those and take all the defaults, so which, which is what we're going to do today. Um, and so here's what the package.json file is going to look like. So that's kind of what it's what it's created. Um, and you can kind of see uh, exactly kind of what uh, what it is. Introduction to deploying an application on Skynet. Pretty cool. All right, so next we want to install Webpack. So we're going to npm install Webpack pack CLI. Save. Let that do its thing. And that's just setting up some of the Webpack structure that we're going to need. Doesn't take too long. Perfect. All right. Uh, so that created a node modules package, which has a bunch of dependencies in it, um, and updated our package.json file. And so now we're going to uh, make a small edit to our package.json file. So we're going to go in to our package.json file. Uh, we're going to remove this main uh, index.js uh, file um, line, and we're just going to change it to private, and we're going to change this to true. And that's all. I'm going to save that. Uh, just to keep things clean, we're going to go ahead and create a git ignore file. And we're just going to add the standard you know, git and node modules so that we can commit our work and not have uh, all the node module packages all kind of in there cluttering things up. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of the first step. So our, our application is initialized. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add everything. And I'm going to commit it saying initialization, initialization step. Great. All right. So our application is initialized. So next, we're going to add some code files. So um, to avoid going through uh, writing out all the kind of code um, in, in detail each time, I've, I've made some templates. We've made some templates for people so that they can use that and kind of get going. So we're going to make two directories. So we're going to make a disk directory and a source directory. We are going to then uh, copy our templates over from uh, that we have. So we have an index.html file uh, that we're going to cap copy into the disk directory. And then we have a index.js file that we are going to cap copy into the source directory. Now we can see in our disk directory, we have our index.html file. In our source directory, we have our index.js file. Um, and if we go and take a look at what we just copied over, um, uh, so you can see the, the HTML file is just a standard uh, single page HTML file. Um, we have um, basically what we're going to be doing is be creating an application that uploads media um, media content to Skynet, and then we can share it. Um, so we've got an upload media button. Uh, we have a create media page button. Uh, and then we have a little JavaScript snippet at, at the bottom that just adds a listener to that, uh, that button. So all very kind of standard um, web development single page application stuff. So nothing nothing super super different there. So then if we look into our index.js file, so you can see at the top we have we're importing um, a Skynet client and upload directory function from Skynet.js. So that's the JavaScript uh, SDK library that we're going to be using. Um, <clears throat> we're initializing a client. Um, this is just the uh, some filler code that we put in, so basically creating a, a little bit of a web page for that media that's going to get resolved to, so just kind of some styling stuff. It's not really um, anything Skynet specific. Um, and then this is really the this one line down here, line 38, where we create 
uh, upload directory. We upload the media folder that we grabbed from the web page. Uh, and that's basically it. That is all the Skynet code that we have written for this application. Everything else is, is pretty much vanilla JavaScript and kind of can be changed to whatever your application needs are. Um, but just kind of wanted to highlight that to show um, really how uh, easy it is to integrate Skynet into your application. All right, so just because we don't want to, uh, we want to look nice and nice and polished. We're also going to copy in our uh, styled CS um, file so that we can have some nice styling on our application. We're also going to put that into the this folder. Now we have those two files. And we're going to go ahead and add those and commit saying added code files. All right. So now we want to, since our index.js file is using the Skynet.js SDK, we want to make sure that that is installed and able to use. So we go npm install Skynet.js. Great. And that just updated our package.json file. Let's see, Skynet.js version 2. Perfect. All right, let's add that. Perfect. All right, next it is, we now have our application ready. So we're going to now build our application. So we're gonna build it with Webpack. So we're going to do npm or npx Webpack. Let that do its thing. All right, we have a little bit of a bug. And Going to quickly debug this live. One second. All right, I think we're just might have a small bug in the JavaScript SDK. So we're just going to go back one. All right, we're gonna go back to Ah, there we go. All right. Finding bugs on live demos, always exciting. Take that feedback back to the team. <clears throat> All right, so what that did was it created, it should have created. Um, in our, this folder, 
we have a main.js function now. So, um, so if we, so in our source folder, we had an index.js file. So that was where all of our JavaScript code was living that kind of made our application work. Um, and what Webpack does is it takes um, that index.js file and then combines it with our index um, and creates a main.js file in that uh, disk directory with our index.html and our style.cs to kind of make that full full web page, Webpack. So we now have a uh, finalized application. So um, we can now do deploying. So uh, deploying to Skynet is super easy. So we're going to go to sysky.net. We are going to, uh, so by default, it lets you upload files, but we're gonna go to upload entire directory. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, browse. We're gonna find our directory. Um, intro, we're gonna upload this full, the entire disk directory and upload that. Upload. And then we have this uh, nice Skylink that I created so we can go to it. Boom, we just created our first Skynet application, completely decentralized, hosted on Skynet. So that took us um, about 10 minutes from start to finish to kind of get there. Um, and it is, like we said, it's instantly available on all, all portals. So we can go ahead and change the portal and it's still there. It's still our, our uh, application. So we can now upload some media. So we can go and find picture, create that media, and it's going to create us a new Skylink, and we go to it, and we have our new media page. So pretty exciting. So kind of, and, and even this page, as we said, is fully available across Skynet. So we changed the web portal again and it's still there, same media. Um, and so, you know, this is a, a relatively simple application, but you can kind of start to see the power behind Skynet. So it's incredibly easy to get an application going, upload it to Skynet. It, that application is now fully decentralized. It's gonna be there um, as long as a portal is pinning it um, and making it available. Um, people can then create media pages through that application and that media page is fully decentralized and available forever. And even if the application, that original application goes down, as long as someone is pinning that media page application or that media page, uh, that media page is going to be available. So it's not even dependent on the previous application. So everything is uh, independently decentralized. That's kind of that account level of decentralization that we were talking about. Um, it's a really powerful, really exciting stuff. Um, and this, that's just kind of the beginning. We kind of showed the example of how uh, Skynet allows for uh, more advanced applications, like uh, the Blogger is a great example. Um, it you know again creates, allows you to create that content, edit that content, upload that content all to Skynet, um, fully decentralized, and then your blog posts, your media pages are then again fully decentralized and ready to go. Um, Awesome. So that was kind of the the main uh, main workshop they wanted to go through. Is as you can kind of see, it's you know super simple, super easy to get going. Um, that Sky uh, that Skynet workshop is available on our GitHub, available for anyone. Um, we will be adding uh, additional features to it as um, as time goes along. So as we update the SDKs, we'll we'll be working on those workshops um, to allow people to kind of work through what those examples are to see how they can you know use that new functionality uh, and take that and then go off and and build their own applications. Um, yeah. So uh, seeing a couple stuff, a couple of posts in, in the comments. Um, you know, happy to uh, try and answer some questions live. If there are questions in the comments or things to uh, um, go over, uh, I can definitely share um, share those links in uh, the comments. Um, so, 
uh, we'll share some of those uh, uh, links to Skynet and the workshop and how we can join our, our Discord if you want to get more involved and ask some more questions. Um, yeah, super excited to kind of share all that with everyone. Give some time for people to ask some more questions. All right, I see a question in there. Can one deploy a machine learning model on Skynet? Um, so right now, Skynet is really focused on um, content distribution uh, versus uh, processing power. Um, and so the so uh, and some sort of machine learning um, model uh, wouldn't be able to, uh, wouldn't probably wouldn't be able to be like a fully decentralized um, Skynet application, um, but if it was hosted somewhere else, I'm sure it could. Um, uh, there are some opportunities to integrate the data that is on that is on Skynet for that machine learning, um, which would be uh, super super interesting. It'd be really cool to kind of see what people would uh, come up with that. Um, yeah. So uh, thank you so much, Matthew, for covering all the aspects of the uh, Skynet and building the uh, live app using the uh, Skynet, right? So that was really a cool, cool thing, right? And uh, uh, all those people, those who would like to join uh, uh, Shaya's, uh, what you call, uh, Discord channel, I'm sharing the link over here in the comment section. You guys can go and join the Discord of Shaya. And also, if you would like to go and... Uh, Check out the uh, Skynet GitHub repo. Uh, I shared the link. You guys can go head towards there. Check out their GitHub repo, right? Also, Foxy repo. Do something like what you want to do. Do it. Build some apps. Uh, share with share on the Twitter. Tag Matthew. Tag Shaya. Tag Zubi. What you are building today. So that would be a cool thing to see, right? So I think Alex would like to add uh, you, uh, Matthew. Would, you would like to add, add something else? Um. Yes, thanks, Julian. Uh, just posted a question about will there be another hackathon in the future? Uh, I meant to mention that. So we actually have a hackathon coming up in the next week or two. So um, I'll uh, also link in our uh, Twitter um, uh, where, so if you're not on Discord um, and prefer uh, Twitter, for example, uh, we have all of those announcements uh, coming out on uh, on there. So the, our upcoming hackathon, uh, we will be sharing the dates uh, coming soon. We'll be sharing the uh, bounties for that. Uh, we're actually partnering with uh, Near for this upcoming um, hackathon. So we've been trying to uh, do these hackathons with different partnerships of uh, applications to kind of show how how easily you know Skynet can integrate with all these different um, uh, Web3 technologies and, and really kind of support the um, kind of foundation and adoption of uh, Web3. And and yeah, so we're super excited about that. Thanks for that great prompt question. <laughs> um, yeah, so super excited about that hackathon coming up. Um, so definitely join our Discord, follow us on Twitter to kind of get those updates. Um, and in the meantime, yeah, check out our, our Skynet workshop. Um, we'll probably be doing um, a very similar one during the first uh, week of the hackathon to kind of get you know get everyone up to speed quickly. And yeah, we plan on doing a lot of hackathons um, this year and trying to do different partnerships with different um, technologies. So um, if you have some cool ideas of of partnerships um, that you know you're psyched about, you know we would love to hear those because uh, want to kind of support where the interests are in the communities. Um, and yeah, so we'd love to hear what people are thinking. Great. So uh, that means you guys can join uh, uh, join Sia's uh, uh, Discord channel. You can head towards there, join them, and get all the updates about the upcoming hackathon. Also, uh, we we uh, we at Zubi will also share about the Sia's uh, hackathon in our community. 
uh, we are having good friends at CR. So definitely, Matthew, uh, share it with us. We will share. Uh, we will love to spread some words about the hackathon in our community as well. So you guys can join uh, Zubi on Discord, on Zubi's Telegram, right? And uh, we will. Uh, you will get all the updates about all kind of hackathons about CR's hackathon over there. And uh, yeah. So thank you for joining us uh, for this amazing workshop, uh, uh, Matthew. Also, okay, great. So uh, just Matthew told me that uh, she is also hiring, right? So she uh, is also hiring for some of the few people. So I'm sharing the comment. You guys can go check out their job forum, like what kind of jobs are available there at Sia. And check it out, apply. If you have any doubt, you can reach out to Matthew as well. Right, Matthew? Yep, absolutely. Um, yeah, feel free to. Um, I'll, there, I'll share in the comments um, my Twitter. I'll share also my um, LinkedIn. Happy to. Uh, again, you can find me on uh, Discord. Uh, it's just my last name, and it's the same profile picture, so you'll be able to see me pretty easily. Uh, if you join the side Discord, you'll you'll find me pretty fast. Um, also, if you're on uh, LinkedIn and want to connect and ask, you know, ask questions about our current uh, jobs or just, you know, anything in the future, feel free to, you know, reach out, connect, um, add an intro note when you send a connect. If you send a connection to me, just saying like, hey, like, uh, you know, saw you on the Zuby uh, hackathon or workshop. Um, happy to connect. So, yeah, um, any of those channels, like, happy to. Uh, reach out and talk more about our posting, our job postings that we have. Talk more about the hackathons that we have coming up and anything uh, Sci or Sky related, Skynet related. Great, so sounds good. So uh, I shared all the Twitter handle and the LinkedIn handle of uh, Matthew and is in the comment section. You guys can go and check it out. Get connect with him. Uh, feel free to reach out to him for any kind of doubts. Right. Apart from that. Uh, all those people, those who have joined our workshop, they can uh, they are, they can earn their certificates on the assess.zubi.io, right? After an assessment, so there there are few questions which are related to this workshop. You guys can go head towards there, right? Uh, do the assessment and grab and earn your certificates. So link is uh, mentioned on your screen. That is assess.zubi.io. Uh, go and earn your certificates. Feel free to upload them on the social media tag Zubi, tag Saya, tag Matthew. And uh, yeah, so that's all about today. Thank you for joining us, uh, Matthew. This, this was really a very wonderful session. It was really a, some new thing for me too as well, like building something using Skynet and uh, completely on a decentralized thing. So thank you for uh, joining us. Uh, looking forward to have more sessions with you in the upcoming uh, in upcoming days, right? And uh, yeah, so we are doing, uh, we are wrapping up all the session here. Thank you for uh, joining us. If you have any doubt, if you left with the, any of the unanswered questions, feel free to reach out to me, Matt, to in the uh, community, or you can also reach out to him on social media platform, right? Okay. So before we wrap up, uh, Matthew, would you like to answer this question? Yep. Yeah. So um, yeah, right now we yeah jobs are not U.S. resident only. Uh, we have a number of uh, employees that are in uh, Europe right now. Um, we're still a pretty small team. And so we have some restrictions around kind of time zone requirements, which we're, we're discussing internally how we might be able to adjust those. Um, but those are really just around, um, how we can, you know, properly connect with all members of the team still being pretty, pretty small. Um, but yeah, if, if you're, if you're interested, um, still, still apply, even if you're outside of those, uh, time zone requirements that we have, um, on there. Yeah, we have a bunch of we have a, a handful of people in Zur uh, Switzerland and, and Poland and stuff. So, um, yeah, Europe is totally fine. If you're outside, if you're outside of the time zone windows, um, still apply. We're we're potentially going to uh, think of ways that we can better support applicants outside of those. Um, and so, yeah, definitely, definitely still apply. Um, yeah, thanks again, Zuby, for having me on here. Uh, it was super fun. I uh, really enjoyed it. Um, as for the certificates, it would be really cool if people can download those and upload them to Sky Skynet and kind of share the Skylink um, of the certificates. Uh, that would be really awesome. Great. So uh, guys, go earn your certificates, upload them on the Skynet, and tag us on social media. Let Matthew know like what you have did with the Skynet, what you have learned today. 
upload it on social media and let us know right so thank you for joining us today wrapping up of, wrapping up the session over here signing off for today stay tuned for the upcoming uh, events for the upcoming updates we are having some of the amazing sessions up uh, in the pipeline also we are having his uh, own hackathon in the pipeline so stay tuned in the community we will keep updating you with all the information thank you for joining us today thank you so much guys uh, signing off bye bye stay safe stay home thanks so much thank you matthew for joining us today bye yeah thank you stay safe everyone bye